Hey guys, it's Minimize and welcome to a RimWorld tutorial. Now, I quite often see things like this on Reddit, on the Steam forums, various other places. Um, people who are a little bit overwhelmed by RimWorld. So it says, noob here, point me please. I started the tutorial having never played a game like this and I feel overwhelmed. There is so much to remember or do, or it sure seems that way. Almost as though I'd like tips to continue until I get it. Any guidance would be appreciated. Well, we are definitely here to point you, and point you is what we are going to do. Um, so this is going to be a sort of real basic tutorial on how to get up and running on RimWorlds, on how to get started and make sure that your people survive the first little initial periods, um, and everything that you are able to do, you can do for them in order to keep them, as I say, alive. So let's go and have a look. Let's delve into it and um, get ourselves up and running and, and just show you all the basics. Okay, so we've generated our world on RimWorld. Here we are, we're presented with it right now. So, what is the best startup biome? Or maybe easiest one would be a better question. I'm trying one of the forests with coast. Lots of wood, obviously, O.O. .O. Eventually, I could fish some fishes. And if not, I can harvest all year. But I have almost no mountains, so steel is my worst nightmare right now. So where do you guys think is the easiest start? O dot O. Okay, unfortunately, in RimWorld, you cannot fish any fishes. So that's out of the question. Um, easiest place to start, best biome to start for me, if you're new to RimWorld, is probably going to be the Temperate Forest, which is this sort of like light greeny area here. You do have the dark green area, which is a tropical rainforest. And um, I think that's probably going to be a little bit, you're going to have to sort of um, suffer through sort of like diseases and stuff a lot more. They're a lot more common. And um, so, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't really advise the tropical um, for somebody who's just starting out. So that leaves us with the temperate forest. Um, if we click the little terrain tab here, we get a brief overview of um, what is going on in the temperate forest. Now, you'll see the terrain type uh, listed here is flat. And if you zoom in a little bit more, you can see sort of what is looking like these little um, untidy areas around here. Now, if you click on them, you'll see it will change to large hills, the smaller ones, the smaller hills. And then you've got the uh, the bigger ones, which are mountainous regions. Now, the mountainous regions and the large hills, they're a little bit easier to defend because there are large chunks of rock around. So what you can do with those is you can bury yourself in. You can dig out like an area inside the uh, like the mountains and sort of um, just keep your colony inside there. That's a very good tactic and a very good strategy of a lot of people. Personally, for me, I prefer sort of somewhere which is flat and um, you can be sort of like attacked from all sides. But it does give you large open spaces with which to build. So it's entirely down to you as to um, sort of what you'd want to start with. For this, for the purposes of this, we're probably just going to select large hills. So I can just sort of um, just show you what I mean in... Uh, with sort of like defending yourself. So the other thing that you do want to take into consideration when picking an area to start is the growing period because if you don't have a large enough growing period or a long enough growing period, you're going to find yourself struggling for food. Now food in RimWorld is the main number one thing in order to keep your colonists alive. If they don't eat, they're going to starve and die. So you do want a source of food coming in and the way to do that is to grow your crops. So if you only have a very short growing period, then you're not really going to have a long enough amount of time to grow them. And then you're going to suffer food shortages and uh, eventually your colony is going to go to pieces. So for the purposes of this, again, growing period year round, we're going to start in large hills. We're going to click next and we're going to see what's what and um, show you guys how to uh, get yourself started. Okay, so we're about to land. The three of you awake in your crypt to sleep sarcophagi. To the sound of sirens and ripping metal, you barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. Okay, so when you start in rim world, you're going to have a scenario a little bit like this. And um, your people are going to land in and there's going to be lots of stuff on the floor with big red X's on them. Now this, what the X means, it means it's forbidden and it means you cannot interact with it or your colonists can't interact with it, should I say. So Hobbs here, he wouldn't interact with anything. So say for example, he needed some food. You see, we've got some packaged survival meals here. Hobbs will not interact with those 
even if he needs food because those are forbidden. Now what you want to do is unforbid them. Now you can go around clicking individually on everything and unforbidding it or pressing the F key. But what you can also do is if there's lots of like similar stuff on the same screen. So you see all of these are packaged survival mills. If you double click, it will select all of them which are on the screen. So then you can just press F and unforbid the whole entire lot at the same time. Uh, similarly with the wood, if we double click this part, uh, if we double click here, it will select those two bits, but it won't select these because they're not on the same screen. So what you can do is scroll the mouse wheel out, double click on one and it will select all of them within that area. So then if we press F to uh, unforbid the wood, we'll do the same with the steel. And as you can see, it's picked up some bits down here as well. Do the same with the silver, the uh, components, and then unforbid the medicine as well. And we'll also see that we've got some weapons here too. Now we've got a revolver, we've got a bolt action rifle, and we've got a plasteel knife. So what we need to do is determine who is best suited for which of these weapons. Now if we click on our people, uh, you can do that either by clicking on them here, or by clicking in their portrait at the top. Uh, you can click on the character tab and then that will give you a brief overview or a, a in-depth overview of what their skills are. Now Twiddle, she has 4 for shooting and 3 for melee. Luca has 4 for shooting and 0 for melee and she does have a passion for shooting. And we've got Hobbs who uh, has 4 for both of them but a passion for melee. So this says to me that Hobbs with his passion for melee it's probably going to be more suited to the plasteel knife. So if we click on Hobbs, we'll right click on the plasteel knife and we'll equip that. And as you can see, his next task is going to be to equip the plasteel knife. Twiddle, she has four for shooting and three for melee. And Luca, if we remember, has the passion for shooting. She also has four. So both of these two are equally skilled, but Luca is going to learn shooting a lot faster. So we'll have Luca equip the bolt action rifle and Twiddle We'll equip the revolver. Okay, so now we've got that done and sorted, it's time to move on. Okay, so now our people are all equipped, we have all the items unforbid. We need to find somewhere to settle. Now, the main things to look for when you are settling down is pre-existing structures like this, although they're only going to benefit you right at the start. So you've got one half-built one here, one half-built one here. You also want to check to see where is suitable in terms of defense. Now, as you can see, this is going to provide protection. So is this, this mountain area here and along here. We don't need to do too much to, um, to carve out a defense for ourselves. So what we could do is we could close off this area here and that will make sure that we're protected all the way around to here. We could close off this area, this area. And um, what it would do essentially, if we were to close off up here as well, or across here and then down here, we would leave ourselves with only a tiny little opening here. So any enemies that we have would have to be forced through this little gap and we could have our people just defend this one entrance. So where we're at now is probably a fairly perfect place to start to build. I don't think there is anywhere else on the map which is just having a quick look. Yeah, I think where we are at right now is probably going to be the perfect place in terms of defense. So we're covered from pretty much all angles and um, that is looking nice. Okay, so what we need to do is also figure out who is going to take which workloads. So if we click the work tab down the bottom, we can uh, either set it to manual priorities or the standard, which is what it's at now. If we click it to manual, we get some uh, number figures. If we click it to uh, the standard sort of layout, then we get ticks. Now, your guys, your people, will do the job furthest to the left before they do the jobs on the right. So say, for example, they had the choice between mining and constructing. Constructing, because it's further over towards the left, takes priority over mining. Now, you can change that, for example, by if we had Hobbs, if we had him set to mining but not constructing, he would do mining, but he wouldn't do the construction job. Similarly, if we change it to manual priorities, and I do heavily advise doing this, uh, we can change the priorities by holding shift, and that will change everybody's priority. Or you can just change by left-clicking individual people's priorities. Now, I do advise having everything all the way up to flicking 
set to one for everybody because this is firefighting, patients, and uh, doctoring, bed rest, and flicking of switches. Everything else, I usually base it off of their passions. So for me, and it's not the probably it's not the most efficient way to do it, but I do like it so that if they have a passion, which is indicated by the tiny little flame in the corner, I normally set it to three. If they have a real deep passion for it, which is, a, and I don't think any of our people do, um, if they have a, a strong passion for it, which has the double flames, I normally set it to two. Um, so for this, for the moment, we want absolutely everybody on everything. So I'm just going to hold shift and get everybody on every job just for the moment. And we're going to take over one of these little um, abandoned buildings here. So if we click on the architect tab, what we can then do is click structure and we'll see we've got doors and walls. Now, if you click on it, you see you get extra materials to build out of. I definitely wouldn't advise building out of silver because silver is your currency. And I definitely wouldn't advise building out of steel either because steel you're going to need for lots of other stuff um, like production benches and, and bits and pieces later on. So initially, you're probably going to be wanting to build out of wood mainly because there's lots of trees around for you to cut. So if we just take what the wood that we've got at the moment, click on the wooden wall, and if we just fill in the gaps of this, and if we take the wooden door, fill in this, you'll see our people will start to build. And then once they've built the door, they're just going to go over and build a roof over the top. If you want to see which has got a roof, like what buildings have a roof and which buildings don't, you've got this little button down in the corner, toggle the visibility of roofs. And as you can see, as our colonists go around the building, building that roof, it will give us a green box over the top of it. So if we take that away, that is now our building. And that's a place that we can use for protection. Okay, so we've got our building. We want to have a stockpile, a place that we can store all of our items without them deteriorating. Because if we click on the wood, we can see it's deteriorating due to being unroofed. Now, exactly the same is happening to the package survival mills. And we don't want that to happen because if we're not going to eat them in time or if we're not going to use the wood in time, we don't want it to disappear. So what do we do? We have to build a stockpile. So if we go into the architect tab again, we will go to zone slash area and we will build a stockpile zone. All you need to do, literally, all you need to do, just click on it. And then you find a place and you drag it. So if we drag it just to about there, we will you will see that our colonists will start to store items within this stockpile. Now you can change what the stockpile stores by clicking on the stockpile and clicking the storage little button here. Once you've clicked that, you can then determine and uh, and change what that stockpile actually stores. Now you can change it from priority normal and uh, it goes from low all the way up to critical. Now if you have two stockpiles and they have exactly the same items set to be stored, they will actually store items in the stockpile of the higher priority. So if you, for example, click this one as preferred and then this one as normal, because we've already got steel in here, but this stockpile is actually set to the preferred stockpile, they will start moving items from the lower priority stockpile into the higher priority one. So what we'll do, we're just going to delete this now, just so we have this as our stockpile. But you will also see that the wood is still deteriorating due to being unroofed. Now, what can we do to sort that? What can we do to solve that? Now, it's pretty simple. We just go back to the architect tab. And if we click structure, we can click wall and we can place one here and one here. And then what we can do as well is click the architect tab, zone slash area, and then build roof area. And then what we can do, we can drag the roof to be built all the way over here. And these two bits of wood will be used um, as support. So these two wooden walls will be used to support the roof in the middle because Roofs and rim walls, they'll only go a certain amount of tiles. I think it's seven. Um, I think it's seven tiles, six or seven tiles without any kind of support. And um, any more than that, and there's just not able to be a roof sort of built there. So if we click on it now, you can see that the wood isn't deteriorating anymore. Um, and the packaged survival mills, they're absolutely fine under there. Right, okay, so the next thing to do in rim mold is probably start growing some crops. So if you click the architect tab, if you clicked... Uh, zone slash area and then you'll see you have growing zone now this is where you can set your zones to uh, to grow all your crops so that you don't die of starvation and stuff like that so if you drag it uh, you'll see you get a nice little uh, grid selection 
and then you'll be presented with a growing zone. Now, if you click on that, you can click this little button here. It'll grow potatoes by default, but if you click on it, you can then choose which of these lovely crops that you want to grow. If you click the information tab on them, for example, you'll see it presents you with a list of information about that particular plant. Now, the growing time of potatoes is 5.8 days. And if you choose something else, so for example, rice, you'll see the growing time is three days. So it's up to you, entirely up to you what you want to grow, but you probably want a source of food. So if we change that to rice, and then we'll go and select another growing zone and grow another type of crop. Now, if we make this one around about this size, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much what your sizes are. Obviously, you want something which is going to uh, provide you with a decent amount of food for your colonists. Now, the other things that you can grow, which you probably want to sort of set down and uh, do right at the start, is obviously a type of food. So rice, potatoes, corn, strawberries, etc. Um, another one is hill root because hill root is a type of medicine. Now, hill root requires a growing skill of eight in order for you to be able to grow it. So if you don't have anyone who uh, is proficient enough in growing in order to be able to grow hill root, don't worry so much. Your colonists will improve their skills over time. And um, we'll just set that to, uh, to be done eventually. Now, I think one of our colonists does have a growing skill of seven. There we go. So, um, and as you can see, that number is growing up as she plants stuff. So eventually she'll get to growing skill, um, she'll get to growing skill eight and then she'll be able to sort of plant the hill root. The other type of crop that you probably want to grow right from the get go is cotton because cotton is, it's going to give you, um, it's going to give you cloth and, uh, with cloth, you can sort of, uh, create sort of different types of clothing and eventually like your colonists sort of uh, their, their clothing will run out so you can see this one is synthroid jackets on 99 percent like eventually that's going to um deteriorate down to and whittle down to nothing so what you want to do is uh have some some kind of uh, clothing production on the go eventually and uh, cotton and cloth is going to enable you to do that so that's your growing zones let's have a look next and see what we want to do after this Right, okay, so what we want to do now is configure a place, get a place sorted to be able to store all of our food at adequate temperatures. And you're going to want to have like a freezer room, like a stockpile area sort of set aside to keep stuff cool. Um, also, if you get a heat wave or something like that as an event, then your colonists are going to get hot and eventually maybe even die. Uh, because if we click on the gear tab, we will see the comfortable temperature range of your colonists. Now, if you get a heat wave, the temperature is going to go and sort up to around probably about 45 to 48 degrees, uh, depending on which biome you are in. So if you don't have any kind of freezer, any kind of raw meat, any kind of food produce, etc., is going to spoil a lot quicker and you're going to run out of it if you don't have any kind of place configured to sort it out. So we're going to aim to turn this little area down here into a freezer room. So what we're going to do, we need to sort out some power. And uh, we'll do that with a solar generator. So if we choose solar generator, we will stick that probably just next to the building just here. And our colonists will build that up. We do need temperature. So if we click the little temperature tab, we will need a cooler in order to do so. And uh, you'll notice with the cooler, there is a red side to it and there is a blue side. Now the blue side is the side which is going to pump out the, uh, the cold air and make things chilly. And the red side of the cooler is going to pump out the waste air and that's going to be incredibly hot. So you want to make sure that that is going outside. So if we turn it around with Q and E um, and that just rotates your object. So if we make sure the blue side is facing inside, we don't want the red side at all. We want that facing outside. So if we make sure that that is there and if we run a power conduit through, we don't need to. I mean, stuff will power um, off of actual um, power devices if it's within a set tile radius. Um, so this will actually power from that, but it will only power during the day. So what we need to do is uh, I'm just going to run a power conduit just through the wall there. And if we run, run one like a power conduit all the way through, we can also stick another cooler um, this side if one cooler doesn't do the job. What you might want to do as well is a lot of people do like double wall. Um, their cooler rooms um, purely and utterly for the fact that a single wall does I think leak temperature in RimWorld So some people do like to uh, do the double wall thing with the freezers personally. I don't really worry too much um, I, I don't really double wall anymore. I used to but not so much these days 
So they'll get the cooler in, they'll get the, um, uh, the, the, the solar panel, that's all done. And as you can see in the middle here is how much power that's generating. So during the day, we're at three o'clock in the afternoon, that is going to be generating the maximum amount of power. When it gets to around sort of 6, 7 p.m., you'll notice that that will drop and the solar panel will be absolutely useless in the dark. So there are also another couple of different types of power. Those are wood fire generators, chem fuel power generators, and also wind turbines. Wind turbines are quite good also because they do provide power um, at all times of the day, providing there is enough wind in order to be able to generate the in like, enough power to, uh, to to get that and run that through. Um, batteries. You also need a battery. Now, the best place to store batteries is within a uh, within a freezer because they don't explode. Um, batteries will, I believe, explode at sort of certain temperatures. They will also explode if they're not under a roof. So if they're not, if they were out in the open here, um, the rain would trigger off and uh, explode the battery. So if we make sure that we've got a battery within our freezer room, we can just put that there. Um, when this is built, it will um, start cooling down the room and we will notice a, power, uh, a temperature change. And then we can just come over here, click zone slash area stockpile. And if we drag the stockpile zone just inside, we can click on that, choose storage. If we clear all, we can tick foods. And um, what you also want to do is click corpses and animal corpses. You can also do human corpses if you want. Um, not totally advisable right at the start because uh, your colonists will see the dead bodies and they'll get a little bit upset. Um, but if we just make sure we've got animal corpses and uh, all kinds of foods stored within the freezer area, and we just change that to preferred, because uh, as we said earlier, didn't we, this one's on normal. And um, if this is set to food as well, as a stockpile which is preferred or important, the stockpile with the higher priority will um, in fact take charge over the lower priority stockpile. So as you can see, our colonists are now building these. And the battery will start to store power. As you can see, connected rate and stored. This is the connected rate, so the power that it's getting from the solar panel. Like I say, it's now six o'clock, so the power is now dwindling from this. And um, if we click on the actual cooler itself, and you'll see the target temperature is 21 degrees. What you want is you want that below freezing. So if we go to mine, uh, if we go to one, and then we just go here and make it so that it's minus five. Now this is the target temperature, and you can see the temperature just listed here. So as my cursor is outdoors. The, uh, the temperature is listed as 23 degrees C. The temperature indoors in this is listed as 14 degrees. And that will start going down and down and down as, uh, as the cooler becomes more powerful within there. So that is now having more of an effect. We're down to about sort of two degrees now. And we are now below freezing. So if we can see, actually we can't because the package survivor modes don't do that. But... If you were to have like a, a corpse or um, or any kind of sort of like raw material food, sort of like rice, um, that sort of stuff within here, it would then say frozen and um, it's not going to spoil. So every every food apart from the package survival meals pretty much has a spoiling time. And if it's kept in hot temperatures, it's going to spoil a lot quicker than it is kept in uh, cold temperatures, which is why you want some kind of freezer stockpile zone. So something like this is ideal and that's going to make sure your food lasts a very very long time okay we are beginning to run out of steel and we're beginning to run out of wood as well so we need to rectify that we need to find a source of these products so what we're going to do we could come to the architect tab and we're going to um click orders now orders is where you can set um various types of things from mining hauling cutting plants harvesting chopping wood hunting and slaughtering stuff and uh, as well as sort of taming some wild animals too. Now, if we click chop wood, we can actually drag over these trees and it will designate the mature trees that will be chopped. So trees like this, where it's only 18% grown, it's not enough to actually give you any wood. So it's not going to designate those to be chopped up. Whereas these is 51% grown. So I think anything over 50% is, uh, is designated actual sort of um, choppable. So, those are going to give you wood. Our people will start chopping those up. And as you can see, that is where we get the extra wood from. Now, steel. Steel is a little bit harder to work out and, and still is a little bit harder to, like, to determine. But once you um, once you see it for the first time, you will never, ever forget. Um, 
this is steel just here so compacted steel and it's actually within the rock sometimes it can bury like be buried deep inside um a lot of the time though it is visible from the outside now it you can tell steel apart um, from other types of rock because it has this lovely pattern um on the edge of it so if we go to orders again and if we go to mine we can actually drag a, a chunk to be mined out and then that will get us some extra steel uh similarly um, you have these, which are compacted machinery, and that is um, like a raw resource for your components. As you can see, you've got components here, and um, those will help you with any kind of electrical um, stuff that you need. Right, we have a mad animal, so this is probably a perfect time to show you the combat. Um, what you want to do is highlight all of your colonists, or you can hold shift and then uh, get each of them in. If you press space, you will draft them and they will um, go into combat. So if you don't draft them, uh, they will have one of three types of behavior. Now you can see what behavior that is by this little button here. And this is a change to how they react to nearby enemies when the colonist is not drafted. So when these guys are not drafted, this is how they will react. So this one is flee. This one is ignore, and then this one is attack. So if you want to make sure that you probably got all of your people on attack, sometimes it's not beneficial for them to uh, to, to be set on attack. Um, the majority of the time, though, it probably is. So we want to unforbid this rabbit corpse. And if we right click on our person, or if we right click on the corpse, actually, with one of our people selected, we can prioritize hauling the hair. Now, this will haul the hair into our freezer area that we set earlier and this is where I can show you um, like I say here frozen won't spoil so that's fresh that will be kept fresh and that will not spoil as long as the temperature in here is below freezing so as long as you've got a temperature of, of below freezing um, be it sort of like snowy weather or be it your freezer stockpile then stuff in there it just won't spoil so now we've got some extra wood from the trees that we chopped and now we're going to get some extra steel from the uh, the blocks that we've set to be mined we can set up some kind of uh, cooking for our people so if we go architects if we go production again and if we go to electric stove we can flip this round and have an electric stove in our main area now when that's built that is not going to power itself because it needs some kind of power so what we can do as you can see, our power is over here from where we set up our freezer area earlier. So what we can do, we can go to Architect and we go to Power and we go to Power Conduit. Now what we can do, we can run the power from here with the conduit and we can bring it over here and into our base. And that's going to cost us far less steel. It is going to create a very sort of um, a very complex power network. Um, I know some people do prefer having sort of separate powers um, for their all their stuff um, but for the moment when your resources are limited like we're pretty limited at the moment it's going to be okay for us to be able to run that all the way over um, I think power conduits have a bit of a, a negative effect on beauty but in terms of efficiency that's probably going to be most efficient for us at the moment the current period in time so once they have got the cooker built that will eventually become powered once we've got the rest of the power conduits in and built. We can set up some bills. Now, you're not going to be able to cook food unless you have a bill set in order to be able to do it. Now, the bills, if you click add bill, you'll see you've got cook simple meal, cook fine meal, cook lavish meal. For the moment, um, probably just best to stick with simple meal because it takes less resources, fine meals. Um, and if you actually, if you click on it and you click details, it tells you what you need. So it requires 0.5 nutrition or raw food in order to be able to cook a simple meal. Now, you can make the simple meals out of all the ingredients listed within here. And you can pick and choose those. Normally, it's just best to leave it all in there. Um, but if you want to be more specific about it, you can be more specific and uh, choose your own ingredients. Now, the best way to do it and the most efficient way to do it is have it set do until you have x which is a number that you determine so if you do until you have x and then click details um and if you set it to say for example sort of like 25 if you i think if you hold um 
hold shift, it goes up by 100. And if you hold control, it goes up or down by 10. So if we set this until we have, say for example, 20, and then pause when satisfied, and then unpause at 10, this right here, because we have do until you have, we're going to do this bill, and this bill will be done until we have 20 simple meals made up. When we have 20, it's going to pause it, and then it's going to unpause it, and your cook will start cooking again when you get down to 10 meals left in stock. So it will do it until you have 20, and then it will stop it, and your cook won't do any more cooking until your people have eaten all the meals and your stock level gets down to 10, in which case it will unpause the bill and your cook will start cooking again until you get up to 20s. It just leaves you that buffer of 10 meals there um, and allows your cook to go and do something else. So that's pretty good. That's a good way to have it set up. Um, I do tend to have it um, normally until sort of like 50 and uh, and then sort of 10 as the unpause level. And then that way, sort of your cook will do loads of meals. It will pause it when it gets to 50 and then just gives it a buffer time um, until he has to go back and start cooking again and just freeze up your cook and allows your cook to go and do something else. But with that, you will get meals in and that'll be absolutely gravy. Another thing you want to do is keep an eye on the needs of your colonist because a happy colonist is a colonist who isn't going to cause you problems. So if we click over Luca or drag over Luca and then click her needs tab, we can see what is bothering her. So... We have disturbed sleep times two, ugly environment, constraining clothes, eight without table, and those are the things which are bothering her. So she is a nudist, um, which means that obviously she likes to be naked, so constraining clothes will be what is causing her issues. So if we go uh, gear, and if we just drop all of her clothes, then she will drop those, and she will be happy. So that need disappears and that makes her a little bit happier. So the other two things on her list here were disturbed sleep and eight without table. And if we have a look at the other guys as well, eight without table, doll barrack and uh, Hobbs. Eight without table, uncomfortable, disturbed sleep, ugly environment, insulted, mediocre barrack and pessimist. Now pessimist, we, unfortunately we cannot do anything about because it is a trait. Um, the other bits and pieces, we can probably do something. I mean, insulting, obviously, is something that we can't control too. But we could do something about the mediocre barrack. We can do something about the ugly environment, uh, the disturbed sleep as well, and the eating without table. So colonists will eat on a table or at a table if it is within a certain amount of tiles. I think it's within 25 tiles of where the food is kept. So obviously, our food is all kept in here at the moment. So what we could do is, um, is build a dining room. For the moment, though just right at the start, we're just going to build a, a little tiny table. And if we build a table just outside the door, and if we put a dining chair or two just in here, then our people were going to go and build that. And then that should cure the eating without the table because the table will be within a certain radius of the food storage and um, they will eat there. So that takes control of that. That takes care of that. The other ones were, it was the barracks, wasn't it? And uh, the barracks uh, disturbed sleep and the um, the ugly environment and stuff. So, I mean, the ugly environment and that will be sort of taken care of with uh, with cleaning and stuff. What you can also do is, um, is put in different types of furniture. Uh, if a furniture is made by somebody with decent construction skill, it will be a high quality piece of furniture. Uh, similarly with um, with underproduction and you've got sculptor's table. Um, if you put in a sculptor's table and have somebody with a high art skill, I don't think any of our guys do. So artistic one, Hobbs has one as well and Luca has zero. Yeah, if you've got somebody with a high art skill, um, once you've made a sculptor's table, you can put a bill on there to, to make art and um, the art is if you've got somebody with a decent skill in art, it's going to be quite pretty. And then you can put the sculptures around the room and um, they are going to be sort of... Um, they're going to make the environment a lot nicer for your people. So now we've got a table up, our people should start eating at the table. What you also want to do is go to Architect and Joy and then put in some kind of joy source. So uh, one right at the start, which isn't going to cost you hardly any resources, is a horseshoes pin. If we put that right outside the door, 
um, our colorless ball play horseshoes with that. What you probably want to do as well is go to the restrict tab and um, put in some kind of uh, joy time for them. So right now I've made it so that they do anything up until midnight. Um, they sleep from midnight all the way until sort of uh, until six o'clock and then we'll have like two hours of joy time in here and if we do if we set them to sleep here as well we'll do two hours of joy time just before bed and then if we set the sleep there and then they're going to do anything in the middle here probably want to set them to do some work so after the two hours of joy time they can do anything for that first hour and then one two three four five six seven eight hours of work and if we just uh, paint that in now that means what this means is that they are going to do um they're going to go from this time here so midnight all the way up until six o'clock and they're going to sleep then for two hours they're going to um find some joy to do so that might mean that they might meditate they might use the uh, horseshoes pin they might go for a walk they might stargaze or cloud watch stuff like that then for the next hour they're going to do anything so that's anything that they want to do um which helps them put them in a better mood and then for the next eight hours they're going to do some work then for the next four hours after that they're going to do anything again then just before bed they're going to find a joy source again and just make themselves a little bit happier and then they're going to sleep from here all the way through until six o'clock again so that is uh that's sorting out the needs of your people and uh, getting them a little bit of joy too so yeah that's that the final thing to show you guys in this tutorial is raids and combat and how will be possibly the best way to deal with those. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got somebody who is raiding us right now and they are on their way to come and attack. So we, what we want to do is probably pause the game. So if you pause the game and then you can select you guys and then you can draft them, like I say, with space. And you probably want to set them up in some kind of... Um, some kind of combat efficient way now you guys with guns are going to be your people who will want to attack from range so you if, you if you're facing somebody that has a gun you're best off sticking them behind like these chunks um cover effectiveness is 50 i mean if you don't have anything else sort of set up you don't have any kind of sort of um base defense down and uh, laid out for the minute yeah you're probably best off sticking them behind these kinds of chunks and getting them to shoot and uh, sort of pop up from behind um so yeah, you, you ranged people, uh, you people with guns, you probably want to set to uh, to be behind here. So we'll have uh, Twiddle there and Luca had our bolt action rifle, so we'll set her behind there too. Hobbs can come over here and provide a bit of uh, support if the sort of person comes to melee, which I believe they will, uh, because they have a knife. So they are going to try and melee attack the cooler. Um, so what we'll do, we'll have our people set up here. And uh, if Luca just comes over here, actually saying that, behind... And then Hobbs can uh, provide the support with the the melee weapon. So there we go. Twiddle got a shot off. So we're going to um, bring Luca back up here. And then Hobbs is going to come and melee attack. So just like that. So it allowed Twiddle to get off another shot. Because this um, these also slow down enemies too. So if Hobbs comes and melee attacks. If Twiddle also melee attacks. And if Luca melee attacks as well. We'll have all of our people melee attacking the attacker at the same time and as you can see we have taken her out and uh, she is downed if you click health she will die in 15 hours unless we uh, help her out so twiddle what is your you're not too hurt too badly uh, but luca you have been stabbed with a shiv and you've also got a bruise from the shiv as well so if we undraft our colonists and um, we'll unforbid that knife we will undraft luca as well so luca i mean twiddle we don't really need to worry about too much whereas luca she's bleeding if we don't sort her out she is going to die from infection because open wounds do tend to um, attract infection so you want to uh, close those up as soon as possible so what you want to do is it was luca wasn't it so you want to set her bed to be a medical bed um ideally in an ideal world you'd have a bed or a, an area a clean area set up for medical purposes um by itself but for this, in the early stages, probably just best off switching her bed to a medical bed. If you click on Luca, um, rest until healed. She will go off to bed. And then we, what we want to do with the medicine is um, heal her up. So who is the best at medicine and doctoring? So Hobbs is our best person for that other. 
than Luca. So Twiddle is just going to rest as well. So Hobbs, if you can come right click, uh, he's already doctoring Luca. So we didn't even need to tell him twice because that is set to one of his highest priorities. He will come and do that more or less straight away. So Hobbs is going over to doctor her. If you click on the health tab, we will see that those wounds have been patched up and uh, Hobbs is now off to tend to twiddle as well. So Luca is fine. That is how we've dealt with the raid. And um, as raids get more advanced, you probably want to set up different kinds of defenses, so on and so forth. Um, those are going to be listed under security. Uh, you'll get different types as you do more research, such as automatic gun turrets and stuff like that to keep your colonists out of the way. So that is our tutorial for RimWorld. Thank you very much for watching. If you found it useful at all, please let me know in the comments if you can drop a like on the video as well. And if you do decide to subscribe to the channel, because I do do a few playthroughs of RimWorld, I will love you forever. So once again, thank you for watching and uh, see you soon. Ciao for now.